He died of a heroin overdose. My son wasn't a druggie. Tell me what happened. We got mixed up with some gangster. I can't. I'm gonna kill him. No, these guys. What are you doing? My job. What makes you think you can kill a man? I read it in a crime novel. Cold Pursuit, rated R, in theaters February 8th. And welcome to the podcast. This episode is Phil's insta-take on Cold Pursuit. When I say Phil, I mean me. So, my insta-take. So... What I do here is I get out of the cinema and having just seen one of the latest releases, I kind of put my thoughts down on a podcast for you to listen to. Um, So this time out, it's 2019's black comedy action film, according to Wikipedia, Cold Pursuit, directed by Hans Peter Moland in his Hollywood debut. Actually, this is a kind of a remake of his vigilante film in Order of Disappearance from 2014, Um, And it's all about a snowplow driver who sets out revenge on a local drug lord following the murder of his son. It stars um, Liam Neeson, Laura Dern, Emmy Rossum and William Forsyth and Tom Bateman. And it's batshit mental. Genuinely. Um, I didn't realise this was a black comedy until I got about halfway through. And that's odd, because normally when it's a comedy, you kind of know it's a comedy. But... Uh, it wasn't about halfway through when you start to go, what the hell is going on here? I mean, the t- tonally, it is crazy. Um, you know, you've got inappropriate humour and very dark humour at that. You've got um, the, the tropes of a, of a standard Liam Neeson revenge movie and much more. Um, so the story, uh, Nelson, uh, Neeson's, Nelson, Neeson's Coxman, yes, his name is Coxman, and that also becomes a topic of much conversation during the film. Uh, His quiet life as a snowplow driver in the glitzy Colorado ski resort of Kehoe um, is disrupted when his son dies from a heroin overdose. Or was it? Well, no, because we see it wasn't right at the beginning. Um, His wife has a breakdown uh, and leaves, and he is about to kill himself when actually he starts to unravel the mystery of his son's death. And from that point onwards, it all goes a bit weird. I mean, this is kind of a combination of things to do in Denver where you're dead, crossed with a a Tarantino movie, crossed with about 42 other different films. It's nuts. Um, Yes, you know, this isn't taken. This isn't a pure action film, but also it isn't a kind of a things to do in Denver when you're dead kind of dark comedy um, Hell, there's probably even elements of true romance in here as well, to a point. You know, this is a film that takes a lot of um, kind of random moments uh, and puts them all into what is a really quite entertaining film. Now, don't get me wrong, it's far from perfect. um, And the film does sag a little bit in the middle. But all things considered, there's a hell of a lot to enjoy here. And, And the cast especially, I mean... Neeson, um, bless him, he really does take what is a, you know, his now standard role of uh, the revenging father um, and does something quite different with it. Um, it, it, It's played very straight, um, but with a a fair degree of humour kind of lashed in as well. Um, In terms of the film, uh, it arrives on a touch of controversy, uh, thanks to Liam Neeson's um, recent relatively politically incorrect comments. But putting that aside, uh, there is a hell of a lot to enjoy here. Yep, Liam Neeson does a lot of punching, he does a bit of shooting, um, and there's a a fair amount of other people's deaths as well. In fact, death is somewhat of a running gag throughout the film, and I won't spoil that one for you because actually it's... uh, You know, it's quite interesting. Um, So this was released uh, in America in um, February uh, and grossed so far 27.1 million in the United States and Canada. uh, And so far for a a worldwide total of 35 million as I read this with its UK release. Um, Against a production budget of 60 million. So 
Mostly, this hasn't been a, a massive uh, commercial success. But critically, it holds a 70% rating uh, based on 135 reviews from Rotten Tomatoes, which puts it at about 6.3 out of 10. And they kind of, you know, their consensus reads that it's, um, yeah, a sophisticated humour, um, an uncommonly effective remake. Um, I think it's a bit kind of Elmore Leonard nuts. Um, but again... That's not a bad thing because it really does give you something that you don't quite expect. You know, this isn't taken. This isn't one of those Liam Neeson goes around shooting things films. This is something that takes those themes and does something a little bit different. Uh, the cast are, uh, are OK. Um, Neeson um, specifically is fantastic, uh, as is Tom Bateman as Trevor Viking Calcotti, the psychopathic drug dealer at the heart of this story. Um... So yeah, look, there is a lot uh, to enjoy here and there's a lot of familiar faces that pop up all the way through. Uh, I recommend you go and see this because um, it does deserve to be seen in the cinema. Um, it is amusing, it is well done uh, and it is quite a lot of fun. So Cold Pursuit is currently out in the cinema uh, and I would give that, um, kind of, I reckon, ooh, on reflection, probably a 7 out of 10. Uh, high six and a half to seven out of ten. Um, if you want to find out more about my podcasting partner who is not on this podcast, uh, um, check out at Ross Boyask on all the social medias and at Evo Film for the company he's associated with. And for more on the podcast, you can subscribe to us on Spotify, on iTunes and other such services. We're on Stitcher. We're um, also at www.philsquickreview.co.uk, which hosts the uh, review site that goes alongside this podcast. And and you can find us on Instagram, um, which is Phil's, no, Ross and Phil Talk Movies on Instagram and at Phil Quick Review with no S. So that's at Phil Quick Review on Twitter. That's it from us. Join us next time for no doubt uh, more hilarity, movie talk and other things. Um, so that's it. Go and see Cold Pursuit. It's barking mad. Bye.